Welcome back to Untested Builds, where you figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Comment below to suggest characters you want to see built on the channel, subscribe to be notified whenever we post a new build, and join the Patreon to vote in polls for upcoming videos. Today we're celebrating our 50th build video and the anniversary of Untested Gaming by building the character that has been requested the most times since the inception of the channel, all thanks to one very persistent commenter. Eric Kirkland, if you're still watching, I lost count of how many times you've commented, but your persistence has finally paid off. Thank you for the algorithm boost. If you haven't guessed by now, Eric's request was for the Fuhrer of a Mestris, King Bradley, the Humunculus of Wrath from Full Metal Alchemist. Brotherhood. For our goals for this build, we might be a Humunculus, but our fighting style is surprisingly mundane. We're a master of the twin swords, using our ridiculous speed and strength to overwhelm our foes without regard for their fighting style. Just because our combat style is within the realm of possible human ability, at least for this universe, we do have an artificial eye that not only sees seconds into the future, but can also detect any target's nature, including their strengths and weaknesses. And lastly, we were able to not only infiltrate, but eventually come to rule a military state for the BBEG with the heroes being none the wiser. Still pretty far in their campaign, that is. For our stats, we're using the process on page 20 of the core rulebook. Everything starts at 10, and depending on our ancestry background and class, we take different boosts and flaws to reach our level 1 stats. We're starting with 18 dexterity, the best defense is a good offense, so we'll get some double duty from our dexterity and use it for our main attack mod and also our AC. Strength of 14, we won't be beating Sloth in an arm wrestling contest, but some extra base damage is welcome. 14 charisma, we've got the charming older gentleman routine down pat. 12 wisdom, it honestly should be higher thanks to our perception, but we need other things more. And then constitution and intelligence are flat. We're starting to get up there in years, and again, we're not done by any stretch, but something's gotta give. For our skills, we're legendary in athletics and deception, save for some role playing moments, this is basically what we're known for. Master Diplomacy, not every interaction we have as a leader is an obfuscation of our true nature. Expert Occultism, from all the weird goings on in the basement of Central. And Training in Acrobatics, Intimidation, Medicine, Nature, Survival, and Stealth, thanks to our military background. Bradley was born a human, but he found his true purpose when he was given a cool red eye. Human changelings gain low light vision and can take their changeling ancestry feats in addition to the boring human ones. We'll take the Perfection Seeker background for training in acrobatics and warfare lore and the Catfall feat for free to treat falls as 10 feet shorter when determining fall damage. For our ancestry feat, the Moon May lineage not only gives us a Scarlet Eye, but we can also cast the Guidance Cantrip at will as an innate occult cantrip to give a target a plus one status bonus on their next attack roll saving throw skill check until the start of our next turn, becoming immune for the next 10 minutes regardless of the outcome. We're going to lock in as a ranger, we want legendary perception eventually, and rogues aren't really known for charging directly into an enemy and becoming a human blender. Flurry rangers gain the hunt prey action to gain a plus two circumstance bonus to perception checks to seek and survival checks to track a target we can see or are aware of until our next daily preparations or we use hunt prey on a new target. But more importantly, we also reduce our multi-attack penalty when attacking our hunter prey to only minus two on our second attack and minus four on our third and subsequent attacks with an agile weapon. We're starting with a single rapier, it's probably the closest we're going to get to the spadroons Bradley actually uses for now, but that's going to change pretty quick. For our class feat, Monster Hunter lets us make a recall knowledge attempt during our hunt prey to gain a plus one circumstance bonus on our next attack roll against our prey on a success. We can only get this once per day per target, but honestly, we're here more for the recall knowledge anyway. We'll take the quick jump feat to free up as many actions for slashing as possible. We can make a longer high jump in a single action without needing to make the initial stride beforehand. We'll pick up our offhand weapon with the dual weapon warrior dedication. I know Bradley is carrying like six padroons like some kind of titan slayer, but we're actually going to be using the traditional offhand weapon of rapier users, the mongosh, because if we're going to have two weapons, we might as well get some extra utility out of them. We get the double slice feet for free to spend two actions to make a strike with both of our weapons at our current multi-attack penalty, combining the damage if we hit the same target for the purposes of applying weaknesses and resistances. Level 3 rangers gain iron will for expert will saves and to keep from going off at a child during a funeral. We'll take the fleet feet for an extra 5 feet of movement speed so we can spend less actions closing the distance toward our doomed combatants and more actions actually attacking them. We'll take the glad hand feet to immediately attempt to make an impression on a character we meet without spending the usual minute of conversation by taking the minus 5 penalty to the check thanks to our weight of office and personable demeanor. Disrupt Prey lets us show off our peak human agility by making a melee strike against our prey as a reaction whenever they use a manipulator move action or leave a square within our reach, disrupting that action completely on a critical hit. Level 5 Rangers gain weapon expertise for expert proficiency with our weapons and we gain the critical specialization effects against our hunter prey, meaning on a crit we also deal 1d6 persistent bleeding damage with our main gauche or make them flat footed for one round with our rapier. 
We also get trackless steps to always gain the benefit of covering our tracks even when moving at full speed. We'll learn more secrets of our purpose with Changeling lore to gain training in deception and occultism as well as training in hag lore. We've got a lot of catching up to do with father's youngest child after all. Now that we're fully caught up on the plan, we'll take the Charming Liar feat to increase a person's disposition towards us whenever we critically succeed on a lie against them. We're grabbing Twin Parry to spend an action to gain a plus two circumstance bonus to our AC until the start of our next turn thanks to the parry trait on our main gauche. We've got a good offense and we don't have the regenerative abilities of our kin, so this will help cover our admittedly small blind spot. Level 7 Rangers gain Vigilance Senses for Master Perception Proficiency, Weapon Specialization for an extra 2 flat damage on our Expert Weapon Attacks, and Evasion for Master Reflex Proficiency and Critical Success results on regular successes. For our general feat, Incredible Initiative means we're always ready to throw down with a constant plus 2 circumstance bonus to our initiative checks. Bradley's emotion might be wrath, but he's the literal embodiment of F around and find out. Powerful Leap ups our vertical leaps from 3 feet to 5 feet and increases our horizontal leap distance by 5 feet. The Flinting Slice ups our DPS with some damage over time. We spend an action after we successfully hit with both attacks on a double slice to inflict 2d8 persistent bleeding damage, scaling up as we gain greater striking and major striking on our weapons. They also become flat footed and reduce any physical resistances they may have by 5 until the start of our next turn. Normally that's kind of useless for us, but since we can potentially make an attack with our Disrupt Prey, we can actually take advantage if they make a move. Level 9 Rangers gain Ranger Expertise for Expert Ranger Class TC and Nature's Edge, so enemies in natural difficult terrain are always flat-footed to us. For our Ancestry feat, Called gives us a plus one circumstance bonus to will saving throws against mental effects and critical success results on regular successes against controlling mental effects. We've become the dominant soul in our body for a reason and we aren't going to let petty distractions change our views now. The Confabulator feat ensures we can keep our front going as long as possible. Normally when you lie or create a diversion, the target gets a plus 4 bonus on your subsequent checks if you try to do the same thing again. But with this, we reduce the bonuses our targets gain with the repeated attempts to only plus 2 instead of plus 4, decreasing further to plus 1 once we're a master in deception, and again down to no bonus at all once we're legendary in deception. For our class feat, Dual Weapon Blitz lets us spend 2 actions to stride up to our speed and make a strike with each weapon in our hand at any point during the movement, attacking the same target or two different ones. Level 11 Rangers gain Medium Armor Expertise for Expert Light and Medium Armor and on Armor Defense, our bodysuit is stylish and functional but I wouldn't exactly call it armor. Juggernaut increases our fortitude saves to master and we gain critical success results on regular successes and wild strides to ignore non-magical difficult terrain and treat greater difficult terrain as regular terrain. For our general feat, Toughness increases our maximum hit points by an amount equal to our level and reduces the DCs of our recovery from dying checks to 9 plus our dying condition value. If we're feeling particularly confident or up against a foe we genuinely respect, we've been known to take a minute or two for a little monologuing. The Evangelized feat lets us spin in action to espouse the merits of the nation we've led and the pitfalls of weaker peoples. We make a diplomacy check against the target's will DC, giving them stupefied 1 for a round on a success and stupefied 2 for a round on a crit meaning they're going to have a hard time using their alchemy against us no matter what their casting modifier is. If they attempt a weapon strike instead, we'll be ready with Twin Repost to make a melee strike and attempt to disarm an opponent as a reaction when they critically fail a strike against us so long as we're benefiting from Twin Parry when the strike is made. Level 13 Rangers gain Weapon Mastery for Master Proficiency Attacks, increasing our bonus from Weapon Specialization to 3 along the way. We'll take the Stubborn Persistence Ancestry feat to keep fighting on in the face of immense adversity. If we regain the fatigue condition, we can attempt a DC 17 flat check to ignore gaining the condition, attempting to check again periodically if the source of our fatigue isn't addressed. The Slippery Secret skill feat lets us use our Deception skill to attempt the saving throw against an incoming effect or spell, attempting to read our mind, detect if we're lying, or reveal our alignment. Revealing nothing on a success, not a whole lot of effects like these in Full Metal Alchemist, but they're all over the place on Galarian, and we aren't going to let those get in the way of our goals. The Double Prey class feat lets us use our Hunt Prey on two creatures at once. It only makes sense. We use two swords, we've got two eyes, and we've got two teenagers to kill. Level 15 Rangers gain Greater Weapon Specialization for 6 flat damage on our Master Weapon attacks, improved evasion for Legendary Reflex saves, regular fails on crit fails, and have damage whenever we fail a Reflex save, and Incredible Senses for Legendary Perception Proficiency. For our general feat, Expeditious Search lets us completely search an area four times as quickly thanks to our ultimate eye and our legendary perception. We'll finally make our power move with Reveal Machinations to spend an action to reveal our humunculus nature, attempting a deception check against the target's will DC, giving them Frightened 2 on a success and Frightened 3 on a crit. We also gain the effects of Recall Knowledge on a target in the relevant skill using the same die result for the deception check. We're the leader of a fascist military state, of course we have intel on these terrorists calling themselves heroes. 
For our class feat, two weapon flurry makes a strike with each of our weapons in a single action, provided we've already made an attack this turn. Level 17 rangers gain Masterful Hunter for Master Ranger DC, double the perception and survival bonuses we gain on our hunted prey, and we lower our multi-attack penalty against our prey even further, only taking a minus one on our second attack and a minus two on the remainder. For our ancestry feat, Hag Sight gives us dark vision. Definitely take this a lot earlier if you think you'll want it, but we do most of our fighting in broad daylight until basically the end and I just wanted other things earlier. We'll up our damage output with improved twin repose to gain an additional reaction each turn that we can only spend for a twin repose to really become the human meat grinder father always knew we could be. We'll get some extra mobility options with wall jump to make as many longer high jumps we want after an initial jump as long as we land on or adjacent to a wall. Level 19 rangers gain swift prey to hunt prey as a free action so long as it's the first action we take on our turn so we can spend more action slicing. And second skin for mass proficiency in light and medium armor and an armor defense. We'll take the true perception feat to give us the constant effects of six level true seeing, counteracting illusions we're subject to, and seeing the true form of any polymorph creatures within our sight. Not that Envy ever needs to hide around us. For our last skill feat, Cloud Jump triples our long jump distance, meaning we can jump further than our move speed by spending additional actions when performing the long jump. It improves our high jumps too, now we use the normal calculation for long jumps when performing high jumps as well. If only he spent his life teaching others how to make 30 foot verticals, imagining a basketball game with players as athletic as Bradley. I might actually be interested in sport ball. For our capstone feat, Twin Defense is a stance we can enter to gain the constant effects of Twin Parry because who wants to spin around every turn waiting for someone to attack when we can just make more attacks. But now that we're level 20, let's go over the pros and cons of this build. I told you we were building a meat grinder and that's what we have here. Once we get going, we can stride and make four attacks on our turn and make potentially two more strikes with our reactions for a total of 16d6 plus 8d4 plus 60 damage every round. We've also got some insane defense with master unarmed defense and max dexterity that's 47 AC while twin parry is up and with decent charisma, diplomacy and deception, we're more than capable of being the face of the party or the face of the nation after all. For our cons, we only deal piercing damage and the occasional persistent bleeding damage, which is not only commonly resisted, but we don't really have a way of switching it up without losing out on our effectiveness since there aren't many martial weapons with finesse, agile, and parry that deal with other types of damage, especially if you want to stay in character and use swords. We're also really going to need our good defense because with 268 HP and no inherent regeneration ability, we really need to get the fight over quick. We're more of a crashing wave than a rising tide. Thanks for tuning in to our anniversary video. We're looking forward to another year of awesome builds. Paiso isn't slowing down with Pathfinder 2 and Attested Gaming is going to be here for the whole ride, so why not subscribe? And if you want to help support the channel directly, join the Patreon to vote in polls for upcoming videos and make a priority character request today. Until next time, have a good week, take care, and play more Pathfinder.